What up, what a world, it's your homeboy Wordplay TJ, and I'm back with another video for you. This time around, I'm gonna tell you the best computer specs for your home recording studio. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so I know you've all experienced this. You've been playing your favorite game online and you've been trying to beat this level and for some reason your computer is glitchy, it's not responsive, it lags, it hangs up, and sometimes it even crashes. So this is a real experience of computer users and it's definitely a real experience for users in their home recording studio. So what I'm doing in this video is sharing some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I recently upgraded my computer too and once I did it, I, I was... I was so happy because now I don't have the same crashes anymore. My recordings aren't lagging. Um, I don't have issues with my production part of the studio. So I'm, I'm just feeling really great about building and investing in this computer. I want you to make the same investment. And so this guide is for you. So the first step to thinking about what you're going to purchase as your computer is thinking about what you're going to do with the computer. So for people like me who record and make their own beats, I need a different computer setup than other people. But some people just make beats. And so you may need a simpler system that doesn't have to archive all of these recordings and plugins and things of that nature. So determining the use of your studio before you start to purchase anything and also determining the future use of your studio, uh, what you want to do with it in the future is important as well. So the next thing you want to do is pick your specs. So specs are the specifications of your computer hardware and the software at times. So there's four main components to think about when picking your specs that are the most important to your computer running and operating smoothly. So those are your CPU, your RAM, your storage capacity, and your GPU. The CPU is like the brain of your computer. It handles all the processes. You know how you can you know, do one thing with your right hand, do one thing with your left hand. That's what the CPU is basically doing inside of your computer. It's processing all of the things that you do. The RAM is like your short-term memory. Say you studied for a test and you're trying to remember what you just studied and recall it for that test. That's what your, that's what your RAM is doing. It's, it's storing some stuff temporarily so you can access it later. It's called random access memory. Your storage is what holds all of your software. So oftentimes this was called a hard disk drive. Now it's called solid state drive. Uh, both of those drives are still used in computers and both store files in a different way. The most important part that you need to remember is it's like your long-term memory. It's like storing your phone numbers, your anniversaries, your birth dates, all of those things are important for you to remember. And so it goes into long term storage inside of your computer. The last piece is sometimes optional on computers, but it's still important. And this is your graphics processing unit or your GPU. Your GPU is designed to handle all the graphics processing on your computer. So the images that you see on the screen, how the interface works, and even the shadows behind fonts. Your GPU can handle all of those things and takes the load off of your CPU. So your CPU can do some important background work while your GPU can do what you see with your eyes. So now that you understand what those components components do, now you want to pick the parts that are best for your computer setup. So most of this advice comes from a video produced by Audio University talking to an expert about the specs of their computer. What I'm going to do is just break them down a little bit more and give you something tangible that you can see alongside of the words that we're, we're talking about. So I'm going to give you multiple different options of computers that you can purchase from good to better to best so you can choose what would work for your budget and would work for your long-term 
home studio use. So first off, let's start with the CPU, the central processing unit. Because this is the brains of your computer, you wanna make sure that you pick something that works really well. So when it comes to a budget-friendly CPU or processor, you're going to choose something like a Ryzen 5 or an i5 made by Intel. So for processors, something within the 5 series is going to be good. Better would be something in the 7 series and the best would be in the 9 series for these chips. And just for reference, good is best for your wallet and better would be the best value for long term usage. So even if something's good for your wallet, you might not be able to use it for as long and a good computer should last you up to 10 years with regular maintenance and scheduled updates. So for RAM, the random access memory, the best option is the middle of the road, the 32 gigabytes of RAM. So your RAM can handle multiple processes at once. Say you have a window for writing lyrics and then you have another window up for your recording session. Your recording session is often handling multiple processes at once as well. So it's doing things like running a plugin. Meanwhile, it's doing playback on a plugin as well. And so those processes overlap and oftentimes your RAM needs to handle the storage of those files temporarily. So this is where things get a little more complicated. Your storage isn't as simple as it seems. It's important when you're building a computer for a home recording studio or some professional use to manage your storage separately. So what I mean by that is have separate storage for your operating system, whether you're on Windows or Macintosh. Your operating system is gonna take a lot of capacity. You're going to download programs. You're gonna download plugins. You're gonna download updates. You're gonna download a bunch of stuff that's gonna take up your operating system storage. You don't want your operating system storage to be the same as where you store all of your audio files or where you store all of your samples. So a good middle of the road would be a one terabyte MVME drive. So next up, you want to pick a sample drive, something that's going to hold all the audio that you want to process for music production, hold all the audio you want to process for a recording session. It's just going to, it's going to manage all of the files that you need to rotate out in your sessions. So the best value for you would be a one terabyte solid state drive. You can go up to two, but one terabyte will be okay because you're just managing a small batch of files that just need to be um, used on a regular basis. So there's two more storage drives that I wanna talk about, and then I'll talk about the option of a GPU. So the next one is an audio drive. And so this is where your storage starts to get really large. Now you're storing master files for your records, you're storing mixes, you're storing references, you're storing all the files that have to do with your recording and your productions permanently. For a small artist or a small home recording studio where you don't make a lot of work, you can get away with two terabytes. I would recommend a solid state drive, which is a little bit more accessible than a hard disk drive. The differences I won't go deep into, but the basics are you're accessing memory from like a memory card versus a CD. The last drive I wanna talk about is your backup drive. And so this is super important. You wanna have the most long lasting storage that you can possibly get for your backup drive. For this setup, I'm gonna recommend eight terabytes of an external hard drive. It could be a hard disk drive, it could be a solid state drive, whatever you choose, but at, at the very least, pick something that is going to work for the long term. You wanna use this to back up your system. You wanna use this to back up your recordings. You wanna basically archive all of your work on this drive. So like I mentioned before, I said I would talk about the GPU just briefly. The GPU is something that you can purchase that handles the graphics processing on your computer and can handle your display processing as well. This is an extra add-on, this helps take the load off of your CPU. So if you're doing some heavy intensive, like multiple plugins, you got, you got like a uh, hundred tracks on your, your Pro Tools session, 
you definitely want to grab a GPU that can handle some other processes while your CPU is handling a lot of the work. So all of my suggestions are down in the link below. So those links help support this channel and help me make these videos on a regular basis so I can help you. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I appreciate you watching this video. Be sure to share what your computer setup is going to be in the comment section. And until next time, it's your homeboy wordplay TJ. Peace. And when I wake up, take me home now. Uh. Every day I'm staring at the phone now. Yeah. Okay. Three months gone, hanging no messages. And only adults know what the method.